thank you for having me here. Uh, well, it is uh, afternoon times, but I think that uh, we can spare some time into a few numbers because uh, it would be interesting to leave the room with uh, having some uh, insight about where we are now. So all the day was about uh, decarbonization, uh, compliance, regulation, um, the crew and the welfare of uh, people uh, on board, and of course uh, technologies. But uh, in practice, uh, we, speak, we also spoke uh, during uh, the process about uh, the need of uh, digitalization, the need of having uh, the capacity to connect the ship with uh, uh, shore in order to be in a position then to have achievable and uh, quantifiable goals. And this can leave, lead you to an effective performance monitoring, an effective uh, monitoring of risks, whatever that is, and ensure, of, of course, compliance. But, I mean, this is an ideal picture that uh, involves different roles, different positions on board, and, of course, uh, availability of technologies. So, what about the fuels and uh, the people that I uh, spoke before, Mr. Chrysostomo, uh, Mr. Ioannou, made a few good points about uh, the status quo. However, it is interesting also to see the numbers. So, there are things uh, growing or not? First of all, in operation, in terms of uh, fleet, what we see is 99% of it, it is conventional. However, we do see that um, there is a shift. Uh, how, how many years are we talking about LNG? Maybe 10 years, 15. maybe 15, yeah. So it, is, it has been 15 years for LNG to arrive in this stage. Why? Because of the economics, not only, because of the development of the engines, because of the dealing with uh, challenges like uh, the methane slip, which happened at least for the um, uh, dual fuel uh, slow speed uh, diesel, uh, um, dual fuel engines at uh, a high pressure that are in a better condition. So such uh, situations and um, innovations do improve uh, uh, the status. On the other hand, we see the orders. And what is the order? This is a picture uh, that uh, actually compares the past and the trend. I'm not saying the future. We are not uh, ha holding any crystal ball here. The conventional uh, orders are 83%. And the alternative ones are 16%. And you can also see that LNG is prevailing, and uh, uh, methanol comes second. It is very much also interesting to see LPG, because LPG is a niche market, as we know, and uh, ammonia and hydrogen very, very slight, slowly um, try, let's say, to uh, get into the share. This is a very interesting mm -hmm. picture, because it actually shows that there is a trend towards the new fuels, despite uh, some uncertainties with uh, regards to production. And this is why I chose to put this slide here. Um, this slide comes, uh, uh, it was generated based on data which exist in our uh, Alternative Fuel Insight platform. It's a platform that we own in DMV and uh, we gradually update with uh, information about the fleet status and fuel status in terms of uh, production, capacity, bunkering, et cetera. So what we see in this, in this uh, slide is uh, uh, tons of equivalent oil, projects per different fuel type, only al alternative fuels uh, are shown. With the light blue, you can see what, are the, what is the operational uh, value, the, uh, for the leading countries and how much the leading countries now that represent these operational projects contribute to uh, the current status by 2025. And also you can see with uh, the dark blue, the planned and operational projects currently. This is 2025 picture. So it's very interesting to see that we see bio-MGO, uh, well, 
well expected to have this picture over there. Um, but not only that, we also see ammonia, uh, e-ammonia. We also see biomethanol and, uh, of course, hydrogen as well. And um, we have been listening about production projects on the planning stage in our region related to hydrogen. <clears throat> but uh, let's have a look also on in the picture that I showed before that has to do with uh, uh, the alternative uh, fuel uptake by ship number and ship uh, type. It is uh, containers, uh, very, very obvious, I would say. The, these are uh, uh, vessels that are impacted by the regulations, so they are facing this pressure coming from the regulations. But not only that, Gas and oil and chemical tankers, but also Roros, are, are leading the change. One would expect uh, smaller types of vessels. These are also relevant, but uh, the variation between the different uh, alternative fuels is uh, um, depend on the ship type. So, in example, if we have uh, ocean-going vessels, it is very hard to speak about hydrogen because the energy intensity of the fuel is very uh, uncomfortable, I would say, for uh, large voyages. On the other hand, it uh, makes sense, let's say, to think about a denser molecule like uh, ammonia. Well, nothing can compete with hydrocarbons in, in terms of uh, energy density, the oil, uh, uh, the liquid ones, I mean. However, the regulators, we all know what their opinion is. And of course, the impact of these uh, fuels uh, to the environment by the CO2 emissions. In DMV, we have produced uh, some scenarios uh, in our recent uh, maritime forecast study until 2050. I would advise you that you have a look on it uh, just to see what we have identified. And these scenarios are four. We consider that in example say that um, people see the trends in the regulations and start thinking about going only bio based on fossils, what would happen? We see after cleaning, after treatment systems like uh, CO2 cleaning uh, machines entering the picture to support the, <coughs> the compliance. Then what happens with methanol? Again, the same picture. Again, we see mixtures of different fuels and especially uh, after treatment solutions come into the game in order to support, let's say, the continuation. When it comes to ammonia and hydrogen, of course, these uh, solutions uh, drop by percentage, but still they are uh, there. So regulations, I'm not going to talk a lot about the regulations because they were covered in terms of uh, description, but uh, I'm going to talk about the costs. What is the implication in com uh, when it comes to the cost? Excluding the costs for crew uh, training which is essential and very, very, um, both essential and uh, costly. The cost uh, we expect that uh, will increase even by 100 percent, I mean, be because of uh, the urgency. If the picture and the targets are uh, the ones that we all know now, then this will significantly impact the rates. And of course, all the value chain will be impacted, not only uh, the charter rates, but it will flow back to the consumer in the end. Which means, of course, uh, as the EU is claiming, that uh, all these funds will have to be brought back to the market for various reasons that have to do with decarbonization, including shipping, but not only these sectors. It is very much worthy to have a look on the climate change plans that every country in the European Union has. And it is very much worthy also to see what uh, Cyprus and Greece has dis designed as uh, plans. And when you see that, you will see how important the building sector becomes. So this is uh, food for thought. Uncertainties, of course, there are some uh, regulatory uncertainties that are um, remaining until now. We are expecting uh, uh, the M MEPC to um, have a finding about uh, CCS on board ships. Uh, we are expecting the updates of the CII. 
Uh, we are expecting the life cycle impact of fuels, the IMO tables, to become more uh, full with information because not all uh, fuels are addressed in detail. So there are things that we don't know. And of course, in an, in a, an environment where there is uncertainty, making uh, selections and uh, using the liquidity which exists now in many shipping companies in order to do investments is uh, difficult, which actually explains the 16% uh, of alternative uh, ship, uh, fuels the penetration into the orders. In terms of technologies, I think uh, Mr. Chrysostom uh, said about the 2030 target. I think the low-hanging fruit is to improve operations. To improve uh, the current energy footprint of the vessel. Uh, in DMV, what we have seen as from different studies, and maybe these uh, ship management companies do have this experience, the low-hanging fruit is uh, hull cleaning. You can get uh, some significant improvements there. But on, not only that, technologies are there to help re uh, improve efficiency. Um, maybe I will stop here, conscious of time, two minutes uh, earlier. But before I stop, it would be interesting to just give you some info to live with. Trends in boosting efficiency on board the ship. On the propulsion, there are many things that you can do either with existing or um, new building ships. It has to do with hydrodynamic improvements. Of course, hull cleaning, we mentioned that. Retrofitting, many companies uh, go for uh, these kind of uh, choices. Um, Optimization of the bulbous bow is quite frequent, and of course, uh, small propellers, uh, propellers, boss cap fins, different technologies exist out there. They don't always do the job. Sometimes they do it, sometimes not. It depends on the vessel type, on the trade, on the size of the vessel, and therefore, it is needed to pay focus and attention on all the parameters around the vessel, both the design and its operation to select the right technology. With prime movers, uh, performance upgrades are being suggested by many uh, manufacturers, on especially in old engines, or elder models, let's say. And of course, when it comes to new uh, buildings, there are different options. There are, there are conditions where, where we see an example, um, fuel chains like LNG, or uh, uh, hybridization with AMP and batteries, or uh, with a few, even with fuels, which is an unconventional and very costly machinery at the moment. When it comes to the energy efficiency improvement of uh, the auxiliaries, there I think there is a lot to say. There is a lot to say. It is little, maybe it is at the order of 25%, depending on the type of the operation, the type of the ship but still there is space for imp uh, improvement. And if I'm not mistaken, the IMO target by 2030 is at the order. I ideally, 30%, uh, let's uh, target for 30% to achieve 20%. So when it comes to boosting efficiency, there are uh, uh, combinations that can definitely support, but I mean, the Carnot efficiency is a constraint always. <laughs> um, Finally, energy management is always uh, supportive, but uh, I think it is worth it to say that we need not to overload the crew because they cannot be there just, you know, to um, fill another form, <laughs> to get another questionnaire to be to fill it in. That is uh, not the right thing to do. Maybe re vice versa, give advice and support their operation by reducing what they have to uh, do every day. So with this uh, slide, I will leave you, and thank you. Um, ho hopefully, we will have questions. <laughs>